just hook up a shape move client uh, method, which is what the server is going to call back on. And basically, as long as I'm not the guy who actually moved it, we'll update the HTML to be the, la the position that the other person moved it as. So lot, simple, not, not much code. You're probably confused as to what it actually does, but let's uh, run it, and it'll become a little bit more clear. Um, so I got two browsers, one IE, one Chrome, both connected to this ASP.NET app using SignalR. And now, when one of them moves, um, the other one moves as well. Uh, and so you can see here, basically, I can keep them all in sync. Uh, and this is doing broadcasts. So if I actually had uh, hundreds of thousands of machines connected, they could all be moving shapes. Uh, and um, if you want sort of a better example of other things you can do here, uh, there's a, uh, a cool library or a cool uh, website called Jabber. Um, it's an interactive chat site. And so basically, uh, you can sign in. In the interest of time, I won't sign in. But uh, basically, you can, again, join chat rooms. You can broadcast across different people. Uh, if you want to do a stock uh, in real time, you can use SignalR to push things in real time. Makes it really easy to use. Um, and um, uh, again, scales out to any number of servers. Last thing I'll mention, because my time is up, is asynchronous support. How uh, many people here do async today in .NET? A okay, few people do. Uh, the reason you might want to do it is it enables more efficient use of threads and server resources. Uh, basically, the way it works is uh, whenever you're going to call a long-range remote resource or a long-range operation, you can basically indicate, hey, ASP.NET, reuse this thread for another job. And then when my data comes back, reschedule me and let me complete. Uh, it's not exposed to the browsers or clients, so you just still have standard URLs for your controllers or web forms. Uh, so, th so the users don't know it's async. It's basically just internally implemented within your code. Uh, and it, the benefit is it reduces the number of threads running, increases scalability and performance. Here's what you do to, today with MVC in order to enable it. We've supported it since ASP.NET MVC 2. It's a little bit messy code. You have to actually explicitly wire up callbacks, um, and uh, you have to kind of increment and decrement um, uh, when you're actually doing operations. Uh, and you have to kind of manage the parameters that you pass. And you have a begin and an end method in order to do it. So this works today, lets you build really scalable solutions. But again, it's kind of a little bit messy. One of the things we're doing with the new languages uh, that come as part of VS 2011, or the VS 11 release, uh, is allow you to instead take advantage of new async keywords that we're adding into C Sharp and VB. And so now, anytime you're going to do a long-running operation, you can just mark a method as having async operations in it uh, by just adding an async keyword in C Sharp. And then anytime you're going to call an async method to say retrieve something across the internet, you just put this little await keyword in front of it. And what the compilers will then do is when it actually goes to make this call, it actually will compile this method into multiple methods. And right after it calls this method, it will return the thread back to ASP.NET. And then when the data actually arrives from Bing, it'll reschedule the thread and continue. From your program's perspective, it looks like it was a synchronous operation, just like it, you might do today. But under the covers, it's actually now massively more scalable. Um, and um, the debugger still works, and Telson still works. Makes it really easy and elegant to write super tight, efficient async code. Uh, and the great thing is it'll work across all parts of .NET. Uh, you can use this in WPF. You can use this in ASP.NET, MVC, and web forms. Uh, you can even use this inside command line console apps. And we think this is really going to let you take uh, programming, and specifically server programming, uh, from a scalability perspective to the next level and get sort of tremendous uh, scaling results with it. And you can use this with Web API. You can use this with SignalR. You can use this with standard controllers. So unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, but hopefully, you saw hopefully some things that, that uh, you might want to play with. Um, a lot more things and more, more features in this release. Uh, but these were just a couple of the highlights. Um, again, hopefully, from a concept or from a, a theme perspective, you saw some stuff like bundling, minification, database migrations, the Razor improvements that will just make your everyday lives easier as programmers, let you write less code and build apps faster. And I think with some of the things like mobile web, web APIs, uh, real-time communication, and some of the async support, you're going to be able to build apps that scale better, reach more clients, and have a much richer user experience, and really change the game in terms of what you can do with them. Everything here works with VS 2010 and .NET 4, and it'll be built into VS 11. Uh, and so if you just get VS 11 installed and you found a new project, you'll find the MVC 4 project template there. And when the VS 11 beta comes out uh, uh, in, uh, shortly, you'll be able to do that. 
And then also, as I mentioned earlier today, uh, you can now download ASP on NBC4 and run all the samples that I just showed here uh, this afternoon on VS10 uh, and .NET 4. It's side by side with all the existing stuff, so it won't break anything. Here's the URL to download it. Uh, and if you go to the ASP.NET website, probably around 7 o'clock uh, uh, Netherlands time, uh, you'll see it be updated. And there's a whole bunch of pages and a bunch of samples and tutorials that will tell you more about how to use these features. So thanks a bunch. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.